Okay, update on the markets here. It's a Friday, May 27th, uh, 9 a.m., so right before the markets open. And this is just the Friday before the long weekend of Memorial Day. So we'll just look at the indices really quickly. Um, so yesterday was day 10 for the I IWM, QQQ, and uh, uh, SBX. And, you know, for IWM, we actually made a new high above day three, right? So, and this is also notable, right? Like these details matter, right? IWM, and let's zoom in here, made a low on day 54. That was our daily cycle low. And then it made a high on day three and, and then proceeded to fall, right? This was a swing high. I'll zoom in here bit below this candle here on day three. So we made a swing high once we went down here. We went down, but then recovered, consolidated a bit. Now we're making a move up. And based on pre-market, you can see we're going to open above this candle at 184. So this is very important when we look at SPX and when we look at you know S&P 500 and QQQ, they made a new low on this day. IWM did not. So IWM is diverging to the upside. IWM is maybe signaling that it may have bottomed ahead of everything else, which is maybe a, a, a more positive sign for everything uh, more broadly. But this is really important divergence that it did not make a new low. I'll just go to QQQ really quickly. You can see the difference, right? That was your daily cycle low here. And then we did make a new low. And same exact thing for SPX. That divergence is incredibly important. So that was your low. SPX actually had a low same day, day 54. And then we, we made a new low. We, we've, we've since recovered it. But what we're seeing in the pre-market, and I'll go to the I'll go to the futures since they're trading now, is you know, let's go, we'll zoom into the daily chart. You know, we're this is from this low here, this is our fifth up. Well, this wasn't an update, right? This made a new low. Definitely was scary. Almost went below this low. But now we've had three days, you know, if, if today continues to hold up. And also importantly, if you notice this just general, I'll take the crosshairs off. If you notice, just kind of zooming out here, you had this period of just consolidation. We were we were up, we were down, we were up, we were down. And then we finally made some forward progress. And then we came into this sloppy period, you know, so call it like around September, where we did make a new high for sure, but like we've just, just been chopping around. And this is, I mean, this is just a general kind of area we've been in. We kind of slipped outside of that area. And now we're making a move back up here. Now what's most important and we'll look at the price action on SPX. I just want to show, because this is live now, is if we can make a high above here, that's step one, right? This is essentially your day three high on SPX, much more significant on the futures, in my opinion. And then next, I would look at the eight hour chart. I think the next serious area of resistance is going to be 41.55. Now, I, I don't mean to confuse anyone. These are the um, uh, numbers for um, the, the um, ES futures, right? So the numbers for SPX are going to be slightly different, but this trades, you know, obviously much more often than, than SPX. And if you're able to do the micro futures, it's actually a really good way to get exposure. I um, mean, you're able to get in, you know, the kind of when, when events break sort of after hours. And so, I would expect at the very least we're going to make a move to 41.55, which is what I'm positioned for. Uh, now, what happens when we get there is going to be important. Do we print this? Do we get a really harsh rejection, which essentially creates a swing high? Or do we get more basing below the level, which would indicate a further breakout? And then you would think 4,300 in that area is the next. And think about it, these are just areas where we had a little counter trend rally on the way down. And so that's there's there are probably interested sellers up at those levels, people that wish they could have gotten out right here. And now when we make a move back up here, they're gonna get out same here and same really here, right? It's gonna be interesting. We're probably gonna fight at this 40, 4095 level, 4100 area. Uh, and that's gonna be, your real kind of breakout 4150 
do we get past do we get past that and equally or even more important is the weekly chart we are almost making a new weekly high so if we can get above and again this is still the the futures if we can get above 4095 right so if we can make a move to 4100 or above that would be a new weekly high which is another way of saying it's a swing low right it's just a swing low by another name right that would make this previous week a swing low now i wouldn't get overly excited about that and i'll explain why um when we look at the spx chart but that's your that's your next important sign that we you know we may have a few more days of of rally kind of ahead of us and so i'll switch over to um, spx and if we look at the weekly chart you know same thing happening here but remember this is week 13 right now it's interesting because it is it is also possible that like is it possible that this is actually your icl given this rally this certainly this certainly did mark a major low and so first thing we want to see is a uh, swing low so that's for the S&P, that's getting above 40.92. And we're probably going to open closer to that, given where the futures are, obviously. Um, and then from there, you've got really a, a lot of air up to 4,300 on S&P cash. And so it's a real question of, you know, if I, if I zoom into the eight-hour chart similar to the futures, you know, your kind of equivalent level would be, let's see. Like right around there so right around 4150 as well just really approximately and these are zones obviously and so definitely looking promising for a bounce now given this is so we're going to open it's going to be day 11 when we open and it looks like we're probably going to make a new high above this day three high and so that's interesting right but at the same time we've had bearish cycles that went 20 days for instance this one was really bearish because it ended on day seven. But this last cycle that we just went through actually topped out on day 23. And then it rolled over to like it then it then traded down for another 32 trading days, right up to day 40, 54. And of course, you can argue that this wasn't even your DCL. And this was I mean, either way, there's no reason why whether it's day 10 or it is day, let's say, four of this new cycle that we can't have an early high like up here, right? And then have another sort of big leg down. And if we look at QQQ, much weaker than both the IWM and S&P 500. But at the same time, again, we are due for a short-term bounce here. That said, this is week 10. So it, this is making an even worse case that, you know, this is a potential... This is a potential ICL. What it really looks like is that this may end up becoming, you know, a like a rally on the weekly time frame that is still a lower high. Now, if I go back to the S&P chart, actually, important to note that because it's a Friday, right, the candles like this candle has very little time to reverse, right? Whatever happens by the end of today is the way the weekly candle is going to close right and so if we can get a strong close that sets us up nicely for next week but at the same time just remember that candles can transform so i think this is the perfect this is probably the best example if i'm like zooming in on this candle so again this is important to understand how candles form at one point this candle was bright green Right, because we know it opened here, right, where this mouse, where the cursor is. We know it opened here, and at one point it was all the way up here, right? That's what this wick represents. And so at some point, this was a green candle. Like, imagine where you see this wick, it was green at one point throughout the week. And then we had a rejection on the daily time frame, which caused this upper wick. And then once we went below the opening price, which is right here, the candle went red. And so that's the kind of thing you want to watch for next week, right? It's too late in the week for that to happen now, right? Because, 
again, it's Friday. The worst that could happen is we get more upper wick here. If the rally today fizzles out, we get a sell off later in the day. I mean, it's unlikely we're, we're not going to make an we're not going to you know go below the opening of this week, which was you know thirty eight seventy five. I mean, anything could happen, obviously, but the probability of that is very low. And so, what's more likely to happen is with a strong close, we get some bullish follow through next week. But again, you want to watch for a potential reversal, something that looks like this. This was a similar thing, not as dramatic because we didn't make as 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 much of a new high. In this case, you know, we went all the way up to forty five twelve versus this week's high was forty four seventy one. So that's a that's a pretty good distance in terms of a new high. Like you're looking pretty confident. You're like, okay, now we're gonna take this out, and then so. That's what you want to be on guard for. And, and that applies to all the indices. All their charts look like that. Like we had a similar kind of move. So this wasn't as dramatic for QQQ. And I think that is actually the tell that QQQ is just really, really weak, especially relative to SPX. I mean, think about that. On this like massive reversal week for SPX, so QQQ made a high at 347.87. And the previous week's high was 347.69, right? So it made a new high by like a few cents. That's just a sign of its weakness, right? S&P was at least able to get enough buying pressure to make, you know, at least a more, you know, significant new high, still marginal, relatively speaking. And so that's your cue. When this next rollover begins, the cues are the weak, like, the Qs are going to have more downside, in my opinion, than SPX, based on what they're setting up here. Now, IWM is going to be interesting, given its positive sort of bullish divergence. And we'll look at that on the weekly chart to kind of close this out. And so, important, we've already made a new weekly high, right? So, all right, last week's high was 182.84. This week's high was 183.80, right? And it looks like we're going to open at 184 solid. So, you know, a new high, like, a, a you know, a dollar above last week. And, you know, obviously see if we can get some bullish follow through throughout the day. But that bodes well, right? And keep in mind that last week, Q, uh, IWM also did not make a new low. Last week was just an inside week. And I believe QQQ, yeah, right. QQQ and SPY did make new lows. So, again further evidence that that's the horse that you would want to ride if you're inclined to go long, if you're going to sort of ride any kind of bullish trend as short term as it may be.